Hello, my name is Alan Marks. I've been a science fair judge for about 35 years. And in this video, I'd like to talk about uh, tables and graphs. Uh, this is probably a very important video, uh, especially for a virtual science fair, because you want to make your data stand out. And you want to make sure that the judges can see exactly what you've done and, uh, and understand your data um, very quickly. So the purpose of tables and graphs is to analyze the data, to help you study the data, and to communicate. That is to show the judges, communicate what you've done. Um, obviously, for each table or graph, you should be able to articulate a question and those questions, the answers to that, that question should just pop out right in front of you from your table or graph. So we're not gonna talk about how to make your graphs or table pretty or eye-catching. We're gonna concentrate on the data. Now, there are certain guidelines that will help your tables um, be clearer and answer the questions much more easily. It turns out psychologists tell us that it's easy to compare, easier to compare things in columns than in lines. And so you want to list, if you have your table, you want to list your data vertically in columns. You want to align the numbers so the decimal points line up. And related data should be grouped spatially. You only use lines to relate and divide information make each entry explicit, and you want to put standard conditions in a footnote, not use it repeatedly. When you are labeling things, uh, it's best to label things in using capitals and lowercase letters rather than all capitals. You could see these two statements are exactly the same, but it's easier to read the first one than the second one. If you want to emphasize something, change the font. Now, the example that I'm about to show you has to do with viscosity. And basically, um, it's uh, uh, the concept here or the hypothesis is that as you increase the temperature, the viscosity will go down. OK. And so there were two trials done on two different days, okay? You notice on this first table, the table is organized by day and then averages, okay? You know there's a lot of lines here uh, that separate the, the title from the data. Each individual data is separated by lines. Notice how this table is made. Looking at this table, it's hard to really understand what's been done. Looking at this table, the data pops out very easily. You have different, you have different temperatures, and you can see from the averages that indeed the viscosity does decrease as you increase the temperature. You can also get a measure of repeatability because you've included the individual data as well as the average. This is even better, showing the data as a graph. You can easily see that as you increase the temperature, the viscosity goes down. And you can see how close the different values are because the individual values are shown on the graph. Okay, so um, here are some guidelines to make your graph uh, much better. The bottom line is you want to eliminate chart junk. All those extra lines on that first chart made it harder to read and also repeating uh, things and putting unnecessarily unnecessary material on the graph makes it harder to read, okay? Here's another example of an XY plot, two different, one variable graphed against another variable. You can easily see the trends here. Here, it's hard to pick out the data from the lines. Now, what about zero? Should you include the zero or not? That depends on your perspective. If you want to emphasize that the values are pretty similar, you can include zero. If you want to show differences, you do not choose to, to show zero. 
when to use tables, when to use graphs. Okay, here's some general guidelines as to which type of display you should use. Again, if the reader needs to see exact numbers, uh, it's better to use tables. If the reader, if the idea is to show relationships or trends and the exact values are of less interest, uh, it's better to use a graph. If you have a lot of observations, then it's also better to use graph. Okay, here are some trustworthy web sources uh, for how to uh, improve your statistics. And here are some additional resources on the various uh, statistics that you might want to use for your science experiment. Thank you very much for your time and have a good uh, science fair.